Hi, welcome to CG Dive. This is the intro video to our new tutorial series. This one will be about using retargeting and mocap data in Blender. So it is going to be a series of videos in which I'd like to cover the different retargeting solutions that we have available these days. Just about a year ago, there were almost no retargeting tools for Blender, and now suddenly we have a bunch of them, each with pros and cons. Some are easy to use, others are a little bit more difficult, but they may have more features, and still others are a good middle ground. A lot of these tools are free, but some are paid. So I hope to give you a good overview of the different add-ons and so on, so that you can choose one that fits your needs. By the way, I'm posting these videos about once per week on YouTube for the sake of the almighty algorithm juice. But if you become a patron or buy my Bridging the Gap course on Gumroad, you'll get my videos as soon as they're done. And I'm making good progress with the retargeting stuff, so for a few bucks, you can get the retargeting videos weeks before they land on YouTube. That way you also support the channel. Okay, plug over. If you're interested, you'll find links to Patreon and Gumroad in the description. The tools that I'm going to go over are Rococo, the remapping tools in Autoric Pro, Renum Node, and there are a few more that I'm still evaluating. They are either very new or they're less popular, so there isn't much info on them, uh, and I really need to dive in and test them. There is also a completely manual technique for retargeting that doesn't require an add-on. I learned it from other people, but I'll introduce it to CG Dive viewers. Okay, so in the rest of this video, I just want to cover some basics and explain what you can expect from the upcoming series. Let's start with a quick definition. Retargeting is the process of transferring or repurposing motion from one armature, which we are going to call source, to another one, which can be called the target. The source motion can be any animation, including hand-animated keyframes, but retargeting is commonly associated with using motion capture data as the source. Typically, we have movement captured from a human actor, and we often retarget it to a digital human with similar human proportions. But that's not always the case. The source and target armatures may have different proportions, and that's an important aspect of a good retargeting tool and workflow. It should allow us to retarget the original movement to characters with, uh, for example, cartoony proportions, while preserving the original motion data as best as possible. And I'll also try to show how you can retarget to any rig, whether it's Rigify, Autorig Pro, Custom Rigs, you should be able to retarget to almost any rig. With a proper workflow, it should even be possible to retarget motion to armatures that have vastly different structures, like a different number of bones or a completely different posture. As a quick example, here is this dinosaur which walks using a human walk cycle as the source. The closer the proportions and structure are, the easier the process is and the more they diverge, the more additional work and cleanup may be necessary. And so in the upcoming videos, I'll try to cover these problems and more. Another common problem is that we may want to have a control rig on the target character. Whether that's Rigify or Autorig Pro or another rig, it doesn't matter. On the one hand, a control rig will allow us to edit and improve the retargeted motion, but on the other hand, it tends to make the process of transferring the motion a little bit more difficult. So using control rigs will be another important topic. I'll offer ideas how to retarget motion to IK controls, which is not straightforward because the source motion generally comes in the form of a simple FK rig. Cleaning up and editing the retargeted motion is an essential part of this workflow. We'll talk about it later in the series. And having IK controls helps immensely in this part of the process. And before we end this video, I just want to cover something really quickly. Is using motion capture data cheating? Uh, for me, the answer is clearly no, but I thought I'd include this in case this argument pops up. Some people will insist that handcrafted animation is the only true animation and mockup is cheating or, you know, somehow it's an impure form of art. And yeah, you are entitled to your opinion, it's all fine. But using mocap has a lot of practical applications. It can make production cheaper and faster. It can help non-animators create motion that they otherwise couldn't. The benefits are many. Of course, if you want to be an animator, if you enjoy the process of creating animation by manipulating the digital rig, you should practice that and maybe you should avoid mocap, at least for now. Or maybe just use it as a reference. So mocap or don't mocap, it doesn't matter, it's a personal preference, but motion capture and retargeting are an important part of our industry, and if it's something that you'd like to explore, I hope you stick around for the rest of this series. And if that's the case, please subscribe with notifications, maybe even leave a like or a comment, and I'll talk to you in the next video.